In this video, we're going to use an optical table to determine the focal length of a focusing or a convex lens. But before we can make our measurements, we first need to make an approximation of the focal length of the lens. Before we can make an approximate measurement of the focal length, we need to look at the lens formula. Now, what happens to this formula if the object is placed very far away from the lens? Well, if the object distance is infinity, or very far away, then 1 over u becomes 0. So 1 over f equals 1 over v. The focal length is equal to the image distance. So if we have an object that's very far away from our lens, and we can capture it on our screen, the image distance we measure is equal to the focal length of the lens. To make our approximation, we need a distant object, so our object distance will be very large. To do this, I've come to the window of our lab. I'll place our lens on the optical table, and I'm going to use a diffuser to capture the image of the faraway object. Luckily, there are trees outside our lab here in ATU, so I'm going to try and capture an image of one of these on the diffuser screen. Starting with the screen close to the lens, I'll gradually move it backwards until the trees across the road begin to come into focus. As you can see, our image is inverted. We can now use a meter stick to get an approximation of the focal length. If you don't have a diffuser screen, you can always use a viewing screen or a piece of paper to do the same experiment. As you can see, our image is again inverted. So why do we need an approximate measurement of the focal length? Well, if you look at the ray diagram, if we put our object inside the focal length of the convex lens. From our ray diagram, you'll see that our rays don't actually meet. What we'll end up with is a virtual image and we won't be able to get an image on our screen to do our experiment. This is actually how a magnifying glass works. Whereas if we put the object at a distance greater than the focal length, from our ray diagram, you can see that the rays do actually meet. We will get a real image that is also inverted. Now that we have an approximation for the focal length of our lens, we can use this optical table to make a precise measurement for f. Our apparatus consists of an optical table, our light box, our target or our object, our lens, and a viewing screen to capture the image on. We could also use a meter stick to perform measurements for the object distance and image distance. Luckily, our optical table has a scale built in, so we'll use that scale for the measurements. So our first step will be to put our target onto our optical table. So I'm going to align the forward face of our target at 15 centimeters on our optical table. That will allow for an easier measurement of the object distance later on. The next step is to place our lens on the table. Now we have an approximate measurement of 75 millimeters for the lens. So that means that we should put it at a distance greater than 75 millimeters or seven and a half centimeters. So to start this experiment, I'm going to pick an object distance of 10. So from 15 to 25 centimeters. I'm going to align the center of the lens at 25 centimeters. Finally, we can include our viewing screen. So this is where we will capture our image. We can now adjust the position of the screen until we get a sharp image of our target. Our target has two arrows, one pointing in the upwards direction and one pointing away from the camera. As you can see on our image, we have an arrow pointing towards the camera and downwards. This image is inverted. You can also see that it has been greatly magnified. We can now record values for the object distance u and the image distance v and solve for the value of the focal length. When making your measurements for u and v, you're using a meter stick or a scale like in this experiment, make sure to avoid parallax error by taking your readings perpendicular to the scale. To determine a second value for f, I've changed the object distance. This time it's 15 centimeters. I'll now adjust the position of the screen until we determine a sharp image.
We can now record new values for u and v and determine a second value for f. So here's our experimental data. For seven different object distances, we have measured the seven corresponding image distances. We could now use the lens formula to calculate a value for the focal length for each of our measurements. The average of these values was then found to be 7.3 centimeters. Another method to determine the focal length would be to plot 1 over v versus 1 over u and to determine the intercept of the line of best fit. This was discussed in our concave mirror video. Firstly, we'd need to convert all our object and image distances into 1 over u and 1 over v values. We can then plot our data. After this, we can apply a line of best fit. For our data, the line of best fit was y equals minus 0.991x plus 0.1357. So the intercept of our line is 0 0.1357. This is actually equal to 1 over the focal length. So we could solve for the focal length, and our value here would be 7.4 centimeters. And that's how we measure the focal length of a convex lens. The manufacturer of the lens states that its focal length is 7.5 centimeters, so our values were quite close. For more videos of experiments and for information about our course, please check out the Physics and Instrumentation playlist on the ATU YouTube channel.